Good day, everybody. Everything new under the sun. It's going to be a, a bit of a rambling uh, video about Meshtastic. Now, uh, as I've uh, spoken about in uh, previous videos, uh, communications are going to be a key thing when World War II breaks out. Um, you won't know because communications are going to be down. Actually, maybe that will be why you have some indication because all communications will go down. Cell phones, won't, well, cell phones rather, will go down. Um, they're going to take out our satellites. Uh, they're going to take out cell phone networks. If we can't communicate, if GPS isn't working, uh, none of our technological, uh, technologically advanced society operates. People go mad um, when they can't talk to each other. They can't get messages through. They can't get emergency services. And um, that's basically what happened with the AT&T outage. Now, um, a longtime subscriber and uh, to my to my channel, Joe, Joe D, uh, he uh, did bring up to my attention um, this idea of mesh tastic, and I have seen this before, and uh, I looked into it, and there's pros and cons uh, relating to it. Now, of course, I've I've always just ham radio. Uh, go get go out and get your ham radio license. It's it's great learning. Uh, keeps your mind going, gives you communications over long distances and short distances if you want, but it does require a license. Now there's this um, idea of uh, what's called Meshtastic. You can go to mesh, meshtastic.org, I believe it is. And there's a whole um, a series of uh, pieces of hardware um, that communicate in a mesh and allow you to uh, send text messages no license required, and it goes over 900 megahertz frequency, Loran. Now, Loran, I've always known about that as uh, something uh, that fishermen use, for example. They use Loran um, to communicate and, and such on their, on their fishing boats. Well, that same frequency range, uh, and Loran stands for long range, uh, is used in this case, as I understand it. Now, there's advantages and disadvantages to it. Now, this is a ham radio crash course, and he did a video, uh, a very, very interesting one and uh, timely, about uh, the AT&T outage and what happens when everything goes down. You need a system that you can rely on that's going to work outside of those cell phone networks. Now, ham radio, you know, requires equipment. It requires a license uh, legally to run it, and uh, it's uh, it can be expensive if you get an HF rig but there's this thing mesh tastic that doesn't require license the radios uh, uh the hardware here is uh fairly cheap this is uh, one example uh, and and it works over um, um kind of a short range uh, sort of idea so the idea with these is that these are uh point to point or or uh rather mesh devices they sync up with each other here's an image of kind of a mesh topology uh, in networking terms, you have each of these computers and um, they each talk to every other computer uh, in, uh, you know, in the area that they can communicate with. What you do is you get, um, say for example, you get two of these devices, you can uh, send a, a message from one device to the other within a certain range and it's line of sight uh, for the most part, so the higher your antenna the better. But you're going to get, uh, you know, half a kilometer or a kilometer out of it, depending on how high your antenna is, uh, of communication. So for a grid down situation, if you have local community you want to talk to, this is going to be a good option, uh, unlicensed option, to send text messages, um, which uh, could go further uh, than FRS, family radio service, um, those, uh, you know, walkie-talkies. They go about a kilometer, two kilometers. Um, but what you can do with these is, uh, if your friends have these, um, then you can go hundreds of kilometers potentially if you have one every, say, you know, kilometer. If you have one of these devices stuck in a tree with a solar panel every uh, kilometer, for example, uh, and they all sync up automatically as part of the mesh, they one uh, relays a message to the other in the mesh. So when you uh, send a text from one end, you know, to the other end, uh, someone who has a mesh device on the other end, 100 kilometers away, that message is going to go through each of those um, uh, devices in the middle and eventually relay that message to the end person that you're trying to get it to. Now, again, uh, this can go a long ways. You're not going to get this across the country because there's going to be spaces where there are no mesh-tastic devices. As I understand it, um, even other people who get mesh-tastic devices, um, their devices will relay your messages. Uh, again, at least as I understand it, do your own research. Um, 
So this helps in a in a maybe a city environment where many people have mesh tastic networks. Um, you also have to buy you know at you have to buy more than one of them. Uh, as I see it, the basic uh, mesh tastic units um, are about fifty bucks, and they require a cell phone and an app to use over uh, Bluetooth. I guess it is. Um, or you can get more expensive devices that look a bit like uh, BlackBerry devices. Uh, let's see. There is a picture of what you know what what looks like a BlackBerry device with a keyboard, and that's, there's no voice on this. Again, this is just short text messages that it's sending, so it can't do much more than that. Um, but this is kind of a, a medium range sort of option uh, that m will get would get you a little bit farther than FRS. Um, but not as far as ham radio. Ham radio is going to get you around the world thousands of kilometers. But again, it assumes someone on the other side has uh, uh, an expensive device. So you could get three of these units. Um, uh, you know, these these fancy BlackBerry type devices, uh, as far as I see, are you know, eighty to hundred dollars, uh, whatever it may be. So you need three of them. Uh, you give your uh, each member of your family one. They're relatively cheap, um, and, and you can communicate. But if one is in town, um, you know, fifty kilometers away. Um, then you need devices in the middle on the way there uh, in order to relay that text message to get over to them. So it doesn't use a cell phone network. It's completely standalone and assumes again that you have your own guerrilla network of devices um, <clears throat> spaced all throughout, uh, you know, as far as you need to go so that they can all relay to each other. And, and some of them come with solar panels so you can literally stick them in trees so that, and have a little external antenna on them so they relay the message. Um, but this is a good kind of guerrilla network. Now, if an EMP goes off, these are going to be toast. Uh, but same idea with FRS systems uh, or ham radio uh, equipment. So you better have you have better have backups of them. And if something goes down, uh, if there's an EMP, are you going to be able to, um, you know, drive your car two kilometers to you know where um, you where you stuck a, a, one of these mesh tastic devices in the top of a tree to relay for that hundred kilometer length? Um, you're gonna, are you going to go and replace those all along the way that got uh, uh, fried by the EMP or whatever the disaster was? Uh, maybe a hurricane blew, them, blew it out of the tree, right? Um, and so this is an interesting solution, uh, and it, it provides you a different way to communicate, um, but sometimes point-to-point -point is more usable. Ham radio, for example, point-to-point, -point, you can go 100 kilometers or you can go 10,000 kilometers. Uh, whether it's HF or, or VHF, UHF. Um, and, uh, you know, in terms of EMP, uh, all each system is going to uh, have its vulnerabilities. But I think overall, uh, st still, you know, for the license that you have to get for it, ham radio is um, still a bit more versatile. Now, the nice thing about this is that you can encrypt the chat, the text messages, 256 AES bit encryption, as I understand it. Again, uh, whereas on ham radio, uh, you can't encrypt messages. It's voice or it's CW Morse code. None of that can be encrypted legally, and uh, people can uh, monitor you. With this, it's completely closed off communication. Uh, it's, in, again, encrypted. The message is only uh, transmitted between uh, your LoRaN devices, your mesh-tastic devices. Um, now, can someone intercept that? Probably. Um, can they decrypt it? Maybe the intelligence uh, agencies can. But again, uh, you're probably not going to be you're probably going to be a small fish in, the, in a big ocean, uh, and no one's going to be interested in your little mesh-tastic uh, network. Uh, but uh, again, if you have family and friends, you know, uh, within a, a circle of about 100 kilometers, you would need a whole bunch of these mesh-tastic devices to kind of get that communication going. So there's pros and cons to it. I think it's an interesting idea. Um, but it does work on this idea of, you know, you just plunk a, a bunch of them out there um, between you and whoever you want to communicate with, and they will eventually... Um, relay the message to that to that person who, on the other side who can then maybe text you back a message so I would uh, I would recommend you go to uh, ham radio crash course look up this video uh, this is a recent video uh, from actually this was an hour ago that he posted this when to, what to do when cell phones go down and, and you can see in his hand a little blackberry-esque device that is one of the mesh tastic devices it's handy it has its place as one other option you should have a cb radio you should have frs family radio service you should probably have gm uh, gmrs you should have ham radios uh, and if you have extra money and time uh, maybe a mesh tastic uh, array of devices uh, would be something you could look into and start experimenting with and see if that makes sense to you in terms of being able to text somebody. 
Um, at the end of the day, uh, for the prepper, for the things in the last days, uh, you know what, having a bicycle and being able to bicycle a couple, couple kilometers and having an in-person conversation, that's probably the most secure uh, and effective way to uh, communicate. And uh, a large part of that is because you have that relationship with that person. If you need to barter, or borrow, trade something, uh, you can. Um, so there, there's downfalls with this, these electronics is uh, maybe a little bit more obscure for a lot of people to kind of pick up and use. And the fact that you have to have multiple um, mesh tastic devices in between you and the end person who has that. So you may not have any communication with them. Whereas with uh, ham radio, um, you're, as long as you both got decent antennas, you're probably going to be able to make the connection again, but it's not going to be secure, um, or protected. So something to think about. Uh, and I thought I would uh, put that up there, there. So thanks to Joe for, um, uh, making me aware of that. And it is certainly, uh, interesting, uh, technology to say the least. And uh, you can go check it out for yourself and uh, you let me know what you think of Mashtastic devices and if it would work for you. Thanks for watching. I'll leave it there. We'll see you in the next video.